<laughs> so I'm Jessica McAvoy. I'm a senior cons security consultant at Rapid7. I lead the enterprise deployments team. Um, and I specialize in building sustainable vulnerability management programs. And that was what I was going to tell you all about, but the thought of that makes me want to shove a spork in my eye. So instead, I figured we'll just have a story time, which sounds way better. So once upon a time, I was working for a little startup. And as a kind of incentive, they decided that they would take everyone camping. And we were going out. We're in Washington State, so they figured, oh, we'll go out to this little campground at Mount Rainier. We reserved the entire campground, and it was going to be a great, you know, team building kind of experience. And when we get there, we go to set up our camp, and we see these signs all over the place, and they said, "Caution, barren area." I said, "Wow, that sounds kind of scary." <laughs> I don't really like bears, but, you know, we'll be careful. We're not going to go wandering off the trails, and we'll be sure to put our stuff away. So I think, I think we're all right. We're aware that there is a bear. I don't see any bear poop anywhere. I think we're good. So we set up our campsite, and it seemed pretty secure. I mean, we had our, we had our tent, and we were doing s'mores around the fire. All our food was, was nice and safe in our coolers, and we had our our clothes from the hiking hanging up there and put all of our trash in the trash bin. So we figure we're in, we're in good shape, you know, put our food, dry goods in our tents, zip them up and, and everything's good, right? So we go and we pack up and we put everything away safely and uh, we go to bed and I wake up in the morning, you know, dawn's just breaking, and I hear these incredible shrieks, like screams, horrific pain. And I open my eyes and I get out of my tent, and there is this bear rampaging through our campground. You know, he's in tents, he's in garbage cans, I'm freaking out, everyone is eaten, there's like just bodied members, like hanging out all over the place. I, I trip over someone's leg. I mean, it was really scary. And we said, what? What happened? Well, apparently no one really told us that um, bears can get into tents and into trash cans. And so we didn't really understand that bears in area meant that you needed to put your food away safely. Now this sign would have been a lot more useful. This sign says that bears are attracted to food and trash and smelly clothes and all of our food that we had out for the s'mores and they can open coolers, <laughs> who knew? That would have been a much more useful message. This also would have been a much more useful message. It says that you can't just put your food in your tent or in your cooler, the bears are actually gonna open that. You need to put your food in a camper that's a hard-sided camper or in a bear-safe container or even suspended from a tree at least 10 feet out and 4 feet up. Those would have been actionable messages. Instead, I found myself crawling in pain, eaten with puncture wounds from this bear, trying to get to the camp ranger, and that's why I had to find a new company, and that's why I work for Rapid7 now. So I was told by my VP that I actually need to tell you that's not a true story. <laughs> because he believed me. I guess I'm really passionate about bears. Uh, the true story, if you want to hear it, uh, I was hung over one morning and trying to explain to my friend from Louisiana why he needed to put his food not in the tent in his car. And all I could stammer out was, because bears! <laughs> but it turns out this is actually a really good allegory for vulnerability management today. I've seen a lot of vulnerability management programs that equate to scan all the things. I think this was probably an article in CISO magazine at some point because I go to so many organizations every day and these leadership teams are really on board with we need to scan 100% of the things. No one can tell you what they're doing with that data, but they are gathering that data and scanning all of the things. Um, so many organizations have absolutely no idea what to do with the data they're collecting with that vulnerability scan. 
in reality, this should be an iterative cycle. This cycle starts with discovery. Discovery is great. We know how to do that, basically. This is what we get back when we scan all the things. If we want to scan all the things, we're going to start with scanning by network range or by using hooks into our DHCP, DNS, virtual environments, and so on. We've pretty much got that covered. We know how to find the things. The next step is prioritizing our assets. Now, nod your head if you have a vulnerability, or excuse me, an asset classification system. I saw three people nodding. <laughs> That's what I expected. <laughs> so having an asset classification system is really essential to being able to prioritize your vulnerabilities and to be able to relate to those vulnerabilities in a way that's meaningful. And I'll come back to that, but that's a whole nother talk. From there, we assess things. This is still part of scanning the things. Those things that you found, scan them. Find out what vulnerabilities they have. Pretty sure we've got that covered. This is where we start to fall apart. We get into report. Most organizations that I see have two reports. One of those reports goes to leadership and it says, uh, this is how many vulnerabilities we found. That's a meaningless number. And the second report that I see goes out to all of the IT teams and it says, these are all of the vulnerabilities on your systems. Has absolutely no meaning to them. They have no idea what to do with it. It's a large report. Half of these are for Unix and I'm a Windows admin. Not really, I can't do Windows. <laughs> but it's not meaningful to me individually, so I don't know what to do with it. And you'll see the next step is remediate. Well, we're not getting to remediate because we don't know how to frame that message. All we're doing is screaming up and down the halls, you have bears. Well, okay, I get it, bears, whatever, just tell me what I need to do. In a meaningful message, I'm gonna tell you, if you go out and buy some bear safe containers, and you go out and buy some ladders, and you go out and buy some rope, now we're going to put all of the food into the bear safe container, and we're gonna climb up the ladder, and we're gonna tie it to a, a tree, and we're gonna string it across, and that will be bear safe. But we don't tell people that, we just say, go fix these bears. And so we get onto this verify portion, and this is where the process becomes iterative. But we're not actually verifying anything because we haven't done anything because the whole process just fell apart. So we get into verify and we scan all the things again and we say nothing changed. I don't understand why. It's because our message was not smart. We need to be bear smart. Simple, measurable, actionable, repeatable, and targeted. This is how we need to report out to our organizations in order to drive remediation and actually find success in our vulnerability management program. If we're not managing our vulnerabilities, we have a vulnerability identification problem. We're identifying them just fine. We just don't know what to do with them. First off, simple. We get a lot of this. Fix, I don't know why that's cutting off, sorry. Fix CVE 2015-0456. Does your admin know what that means? Does your admin care about what that means? All of our admins really want to care about security. We want them to care about security. They don't have time to care about security and their boss is not giving them time to care about security. All we can do is bubble it down to the most simple message possible. Patch Adobe, just freaking patch it. Don't tell me what the vulnerability is, just tell me what to do. What do I need to do? I want to care, don't have time to care, keep it simple, stupid. We also need to understand our audiences. As I mentioned, we usually have one report going to our executives, one report going to our IT administrators. There's a lot going on in between. There are a lot of different messages and we need to know how to frame those messages. Those messages need to be measurable. We have three metrics in security. We haven't been owned yet that we're aware of. <laughs> That's not measurable. Security is a cost center. All we do is spend a lot of money and we can't prove demonstrable success. 
the only thing that we can prove is a negative, that we have not been compromised as far as we're aware. How do we show that we are actually doing our job? How do we show that we are making progress? I can tell you this, no one cares about how many vulnerabilities are in each category. If you're sending a report out that says, we have 11,486 criticals and 6,942 moderates, that is not meaningful. What happens when you go to Black Hat every month? About a week before, you're trying to pack up, you get all the O days. Everyone holds out so that they can make the most for their name. And you have this huge spike in your vulnerabilities every month of August, every year. Well, that's going to make your numbers go up, which is why they're not meaningful. That doesn't mean anyone's not doing their job. It just means that you're reporting on the wrong thing. What we need to look at instead, vulnerability age by criticality. How old are the critical vulnerabilities in my environment? How old are the severe vulnerabilities in my environment? If my policy says that I need to patch critical vulnerabilities within 30 days, which is pretty reasonable for most organizations because you don't actually have to outrun the bear, you just have to outrun everyone else. If I have to patch my critical vulnerabilities in 30 days, then I want to report on how people are doing against that metric. The age of vulnerabilities by criticality, perfect metric to, to demonstrate that success. We also want to know how many are new, how many are old, and how many are remediated. So if I break that down again by criticality, then I can show, yeah, sure, there was all of these vulnerabilities that were just released that we haven't patched yet, but we did patch all of these other things. Great metric. Big wins. If we can look at both the criticality of a vulnerability and, in tandem with that, the criticality of an asset, and weight that and determine what the top 10 vulnerabilities are in our, our environment based on both criticality of the vulnerability and criticality of the asset, we can say, if you remediate these 10 things this month, you're going to make a huge dent in your vulnerabilities. And I guarantee you for the desktop team, it's always going to be all Java, Adobe, Flash. I don't understand why people still use Flash. Sorry if anyone works for Adobe. Also, long-term risk trends. We're not looking at a point in time. Vulnerability scanning is a point in time. Our success is not. So long-term trends, if we're looking at a vulnerability score, a risk score, that is weighted by both the criticality of the asset and the severity of the vulnerability, now we have a demonstrable number that we can say, yes, this might spike up for a moment at the beginning of August, but overall we are remediating more than is being discovered and we're making progress. The number is dropping over time. In conjunction with the other metrics that I've mentioned, these are great numbers. They're not super meaningful on their own, but together they're going to say, I'm doing something, I'm fixing something. I know it feels like we're just hamsters on a wheel running and running and running, and as soon as we remediate a bunch of vulnerabilities, more come out. But with these metrics, we can actually demonstrate that we are succeeding, and we stop being a cost center, and we start being a valuable asset to our organization. This is where we really struggle. The A in SMART, actionable. We need to have actionable results. What do you expect me to do with it? What do I have to do to make this remediated? Actionable steps lead to remediation. We also wanna make sure that those actionable results are distributed appropriate to job function. The Windows administrator doesn't really care about Unix vulnerabilities. The Unix guy, couldn't care less about IIS vulnerabilities. Why are you sending out one giant report with all the vulnerabilities? They don't understand that. Parsing it out by function makes it more actionable. Also, keeping it simple. Yes, we can have more detail on request. If you want more information about the individual vulnerabilities that you're resolving, that is awesome. I really hope that all of my administrators get to that point. Most of them aren't there today. They don't have the resources. They just want to know what they need to do. So for each job function, you need to tell them specifically what you need to do. But also we need to make sure that they understand that we are here to help them. We're not gonna just drop this on their plate and run. 
we're actually going to walk them through the remediation process. We will help them understand the steps that they need to take to remediate these vulnerabilities. We will help them develop compensating controls. Your administrators are subject matter experts, experts on their platform. Your administrators know their system more than anyone else in your organization. If you can work with them and explain to them how these vulnerabilities are compromised, they will come up with creative ways to get around it. So we provide those details on, on uh, request, but if all they need is, what do you need me to do about it? We can provide that too. Finally, we wanna make sure that our message is targeted. Now I mentioned before, we have two reports, one for the executives, one for the admins. Those are not all the reports we need. And the reason is Java. Sorry again if anyone works for Oracle. If I had a dollar for every time someone said, we can't patch Java because it breaks the app, I would be living on a private island in the Caribbean somewhere and I would not be up here talking to you. We can't patch Java because it breaks the app. If I'm only sending a message to my executive team saying, here's our high level information, and a message to the administrator saying, here's our low level information, I am missing the people who are actually responsible for the security of that system. Your business owners don't know squat about security. And I'm trying to censor my language. Your business owners only understand that they have an ethical responsibility to protect that data, that they have a financial responsibility to protect that data, and in some cases of regulatory compliance, they have a legal obligation to protect that data. Your business owners do not want to go to jail for a SOX violation. They really don't want to have um, the, uh, what is it, DHS that governs uh, acceptable use. They do not want to be asked for that money back. <laughs> they don't have it. Your business owners don't understand vulnerabilities. What they understand is risk. Presenting a targeted message to them in a way that says, this is the risk that this presents to you. They can now make an informed decision on that vulnerability. We see a lot of exceptions because of the lack of targeted messages. Those targeted messages are what gets us past an exception. An exception says that this is an acceptable risk on behalf of the organization. I don't make enough money to make that decision. Most of you in this room probably don't make enough money to make that decision either. We have to bring that decision to the people who do make enough money to make that decision. They don't understand what a vulnerability is. We have to present a targeted message with an actionable response saying, this is the risk, this is a quantifiable risk that this is presenting to our organization if you don't have this fixed. Because it's those business owners, the ones that are left out in the middle, that can actually drive that remediation. For the case of Java, those business owners either need to go to the development team, if it's an internal app, or to their vendors, pull up those contracts, see what outs we have, and determine what response we can legally make that will push our vendor or push our internal team what resources we can allocate to get this fixed in the application. And our job doesn't end there. Once they have made that decision, once they've said that this is not an acceptable risk on behalf of our organization and we're going to go back to our vendor or we're going to go to the development team, they get that fixed. We create an exception for like three months or six months and when that time's out, we say, hey, I thought, I thought you were getting this fixed. And they say, oh yeah, yeah, we're working on it, we're working on it. So we keep bringing it back up and we keep bubbling it up so that they get that ultimate issue fixed. As soon as that happens, our job kicks back in. We now have to go to the server administrators and say, all right, the app's not gonna break. You can now test this in conjunction with the development team. And when that's done, we go back to the desktop team and we said, okay, great, the app's not gonna break. Your users can be on a more current version of Java and it's, everything's gonna be great. This is a, there are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of instruments in this orchestra and we're the conductors. We need to be subject matter experts on everything at all times. You don't have to get deep. You can always use Google to find out what the actual vulnerability is, but you need to understand enough about every technology in your organization to orchestrate this effort and make these targeted messages. The bears are at your gate. They are literally standing there. Um, this was actually taken just down the road from my house. Turns out bird feeders are also bear feeders. <laughs> in the target breach, I read a lot of 
news articles um, that were following up on that. And one of the articles that I read stuck out in my mind. It was an interview with someone in operational security, someone that was watching their IDSs, someone that was reading their vulnerability scanning results. And he said, yeah, you know, I've been trying to get the, the leaders to get an assessment for like the last two months and no one has responded to that. Did he actually need an assessment? Are you telling me that this breach was not something that you could have seen in any of the tools that you had in place? Or was it more that he didn't know how to phrase that message to the right people? He didn't know how to make an actionable statement, a smart statement to the appropriate parties that could get that resolved. Instead, he passed the buck and said, if you have a third party come in here and tell you this, you're gonna respect their opinion more than mine, and so then it will get fixed. We can't keep passing the buck. We own this. We have to make our messages more understandable for both our leadership and our administrators and coordinate those efforts instead of just dropping this on their plate. Stop screaming about bears. When you are dropping off giant lists of vulnerabilities, all you're doing is running up and down the halls going, oh my God, there's a bear in the building. Yeah, there's bears. We all have bears. You don't have to outrun them. You just have to run faster than the next guy. The bears are at your gate. What are you doing about it? And thank you. Any questions? <laughs>